Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle back here tonight checking a look at the new Annex 15. I'm going to show you what's new on this operating system. The standard version is based on Debian Jesse. You can run it in, uh, against testing or even uh, SID should you wish. Uh, for those of you in the know, um, the Jesse system is running without System D. So for those of you that, for one reason or another, uh, aren't big fans of System D, Antics might be for you. So Debian Jesse based system without the System D uh, wiggle woggle. So let's take a look real quick and see what's new in the system. We're going to start with the menu. And we're going to come up. This is installed on my system. I'm running the 32-bit 486 version right now. Uh, there will be should be by the time you see this or hopefully a little shortly thereafter 64-bit versions for those of you with more RAM uh, you'll be happy about that so uh, we to come through we got the standard stuff terminal file manager web browser and editor and a new personal menu now you see I've added simple screen recorder to my personal menu personal menu is a, is a way for you the user to very quickly and easily add your favorite applications, links, whatever you want, really, to the personal menu. I'll I'll um, I'll do a, a a video on a tool called Menu Manager, but you can do anything. On, on my main system, I have this set up with uh, I've got links for System Screen Recorder, Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, I went ahead and set up a custom Google link to Netflix. Um, it, it it's actually really nice to have that available to you right there at the front. You can still edit if you're an old text editor aficionado. You can still edit the main ISWM menu, and for that matter, the Fluxbox and JWM menus. But for those of you that are a little more GUI oriented, hey, this this is the place to add it. And, and we have a cool new app called Menu Manager that will let you add apps to that directly and auto refresh the menu and the whole nine yards. So let's go uh, now into the control center. We'll check out what's new in the control center. There we go. So you got the same stuff. You can choose your wallpapers, edit your ISWM and your window manager settings, Fluxbox, JWM. We have a new preferred applications app. I'm we'll click that. And this is where you're going to be able to set things like the default terminal, web browser, file manager, email client, text editor, video player. You get the idea. These are going to allow you to set default apps. So that's what these links here are on the menu. Here the default text editor is genie.desktop. So if I go to the menu, I'm going to select the editor and up comes genie. And there it is. What if I don't want genie? What if I want leafpad, for instance? That's not a problem. You click on the uh, on the link and you find leafpad here in the list of applications. Uh, if I could spell it would be easier. There we go, leafpad. Click open. OK, now if I click Menu and Editor, there you are. It opens in Leafpad. Opens Leafpad. So, this, so Preferred Applications gives you a nice place to set up defaults. This would be a good place for you if you install a different uh, web browser, for instance, you can do that. Uh, file Manager bears a special mention. It's, it's set currently to Desktop Defaults Follow. That means it's a terrible name, but what it means is the File Manager is going to open based on what your your environment's in. So if you're using the Rocks environment, the ISWM Rocks or Rocks-ISWM environment like I am right now, everything's going to be based on Rocks. Your desktop's going to use the Rocks pin board, the file manager's going to be the Rocks filer. If you switch to Space FM based desktop, then everything's going to switch to Space FM. But this allows you to override it should you wish. Uh, you can, you can um, now in this case it opens wherever the the file is. You see it's in applications antics instead of just antics or in applications rather. So you can click backwards and select whatever app you want. If you want Space FM all the time or heck if you want I don't know, if you want to install PC Man FM and use that, whatever. It's your desktop, you can do what you want. So Space FM desktop, you click that and then any desktop you use, the default file manager is going to be Space FM even if you're using rocks for the icons. It's kind of cool. Uh, I, I, I like this kind of setup here. It's pretty nice. So 
Going on, we see we have Edit System Monitor Conky, and while we're talking about Conky, let's check out this new displays. We've got a CPU frequency, we've got a new time and date display, a little bit of color with the blue, it looks pretty good, and we got a network monitor. Now mine's using uh, my uh, wireless right now, uh, Wi-Fi connection. It will show a different monitor for, for the Ethernet, um, uh, so that that's pretty nice. Uh, and you see we have the Edit Menus app. Now this is the the menu manager tool I mentioned earlier. I'm going to add an item to my personal menu just to show you how to do it. We'll do a separate full video on menu manager later, but uh, it's pretty nice. You can click add here. Uh, I've already added menu. So anything in this list I can select and add to my um, my my menu, my personal menu. So I'm going to select. I'm almost like something dumb. I'm going to select Ted here, the text editor Ted, and I'm going to get a little thing here saying, "Okay, what do you want? What do you want to call it? Just a name to display. Ted, and then whatever file name. Fine. Uh, default icon. I'm not going to change anything, but if you want to, you can click these, and that'll happen. And if it's a terminal app you're adding, you can click this button to launch a terminal app." Uh, we'll be showing you all that in the menu manager video soon to come, but this gives you a little uh, sneak peek. So hit, click refresh, and the menu refreshes. And if I go up here to personal now, there it is. I got simple screen recorder and Ted. Uh, okay, so let's go on to the next thing. We got system. We've got uh, some new options in the Meta Package Installer. We're going to type in our password, which is now your user password because uh, Antix 15 has switched to sudo by default. That is completely configurable if you want to switch it back to, sudo, to, to, to super user the old way, so to speak, going root. Um, you can still do root user. It's no problem. Uh, but we have some new options uh, in browser. We've got Chromium Stable, one-click install of Google Chrome. We've got Pale Moon in here, Cupzilla. Under audio, we've got uh, all sorts of audio players and, and music light managers, plus Pulse Audio if you guys want to use Pulse Audio, particularly handy for Skype, uh, which I think is in here someplace too. Skype under yeah, under messaging. There's Skype. We got a one-click install for Skype. Uh, Thunderbird email. Uh, we're sharing a lot of the repos now with the MX community, and as they get new apps update, as they get their apps updated for MX15 coming let's call it the fall, I don't want to stretch that, um, we're going to be able to share a lot of the apps with, with Antex. you got a Java installer, you got Wine, all the great stuff here that you're used to seeing. Uh, record my desktop. Simple Screen Recorder is not in here. It's going to be in the MX repositories. Hopefully we'll add that at a later date. Uh, it does, I am using Simple Screen Recorder right now, for those of you that are wondering. And you'll see that Netflix is gone because, guys, you, if you need, really want to watch Netflix on Linux, Download Google Chrome and install it. Works perfectly well in Annex 15. Um, I don't even have to do anything. Just download Google Chrome. Netflix works. Um, uh, so OpenShot. I got a few other things here you can you can do. It, it works. You click it. You hit the button. You're done. Lo lots of apps coming down. On the network tab, you'll see we got the Connect Shares configuration uh, suite for setting up easy network connections, like for your Samba shares. Pretty easy. We've got GFTP now in the control center. This is a this is a FTP app for those of you who need to transfer files up to your website or I don't know whatever you want to use FTP for. I haven't actually used FTP in years, but a lot of people still do. Uh, under the session tab, we've got some new options. Here's where you can ch you can use this password prompt to switch between SU and sudo for those prompts that come up. Um, you can change your backgrounds, uh, set your auto logins. All this is, is is old. This is new. Global desktop session, user desktop session. Under disks, we got UNet Booten installed for making your live USBs. Where it's installed by default now, and we've got uh, the uh, links for the CD burner. And we've also got a, a mix, uh, a new equalizer, uh, graphic equalizer for those of you that are into that. Um, and here you can set you can set your graphics, uh, but you know by frequency. I, I'm going to assume whoever, if you're dealing with sound, you know how to do this. I, I not very important to me, but. It's here, and there's a ton of options here, a ton of frequencies, uh, 10 of them, so that seems pretty standard for, for a graphics equalizer. We've got a new set default sound card utility. 
Now my microphone is actually going to show up, so I need to be careful not to select it right now while I'm recording. But you can select whatever your default sound card is. When's this handy? Yeah, when you've installed and your audio is going to your HDMI port for some reason or another. You can come to this app, select your actual hardware, wherever your plugs or plug, whatever your speakers are plugged into, and get your sound back in a hurry. Uh, you can't see it here, but if you're running this live off of a live USB, you're going to get a live tab. There are a ton of new persistence features for those of you who like running your system off a USB key, a la Puppy Linux. Except, I'll be honest, at this point, I think we may be doing Puppy 1 better. Uh, there, I'll do a separate persistence video on the Annex 15 persistence system because it's going to be an absolute must. Uh, but, long story short, you've got... Your old root and home persistence options, all the old persistence options we used to have are still there. But now we've also got the ability to save things like the ne network configurations uh, on each individual machine uh, if you're running with a USB. Obviously, if you're running a live CD, it can't help you there. Live CDs read only. But uh, there's a lot of new, new things going on in the persistence environment. Okay, a couple new apps installed by default. There's some new stuff in the repositories too, and I'll talk about them as well. If we go in applications, uh, we're going to see under accessories we have Search Monkey now uh, for file searching. Okay, cool. I was failed to have Space FM search there if you like that. Um, uh, nothing new under graphics. Under internet, we have Droopy, which is a simple file sharing utility. I drew your video up already. There's really been no changes to it or nothing major, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll touch base on that again. Under Office, nothing new there. It's LibreOffice. Uh, under Sound and Video, we've got Streamlight, which is a new, very, very simple YouTube sp streamer. It's going to start and ask you whether it's going to run as an icon or run once. I'm going to run as an icon. What it's going to do, it's going to show up down here, but this little button here. And I have my I have Dillo running. Now this, oh, this is a super lightweight browser. This is what my channel looks like in Dillo. It looks terrible, right? Okay. So I'm gonna come down here to the very first, and I'm gonna click on the Broadcom Manager video I did a couple weeks ago. It says the video is unavailable. Well, that's because Dillo can't play HTML5 or Adobe Flash video, either one. But it it puts the address up in the top here. So I'm going to highlight that and now I'm going to click on the Streamlight button. And now it's going to ask me what resolution I want to run it in. Now, I'm, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to click OK on the very smallest one. It's going to open a super tiny window. And it's going to ask me if I want to play or just download it. And I can click download. It'll download the file. I'm going to play it. It's my video. There's nothing illegal about playing my video to myself. And there you go. You're going to get a really tiny video with 144p. You saw all the other resolutions options. That's it scales up. And you can download a full size. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe your internet connection's slow, and you want you don't want to stream a small video. You want to watch a big one. Well, you download the big one and watch it offline. It's a lot easier on the hardware than running through Flash. We also have the new uh, search bar utility, which is kind of cool. You can search for anything that's highlighted under a mouse. and that, It's actually running by default. It's this little eyeball icon down here. If you do a right click, you'll see all the search engines that are, that are available by default, including the forums. So I'm going to open up the editor. I'm going to type cracker, my usual search when I'm showing off search utilities. I'm going to highlight it. And now I'm going to select Google. You can do start page or DuckDuckGo if that's your thing. It's all there. And now it should open up a Google search. Show me results for crackers. There you go, cracker. Okay, so. Got one other kind of neat uh, system in here. If you've seen these snapping window managers in other apps, in other desktops, uh, this is kind of a neat, a neat feature. It's called WinGrid, and with it, using the Control One through Zero keys, you can snap a window 
to different parts of the desktop. Now it's keyboard driven, not mouse driven. It's it's not quite as GUI friendly as say um, the XFCE stuff, but it's not bad. And it's really great if you crank it up in two file managers or you need to run two two uh, notepads side by side or something like that. You control one on one, control two on the other, and all of a sudden you got two halves going on. A la. There we go. Control one, control two. There's a little overlap. I'll show you in a video how to adjust that. It depends on your screen. Some some people are going to see that overlap. Some people won't. There's a way to adjust it in the configuration settings for WinGrid. There's one other feature I really wanted to show you in the video, and I'll I'll, have, I'll probably have to do it in a separate video uh, after I have VirtualBox set up. Uh, it is the ability to switch desktops on the fly. You can switch to any of these desktop configurations on the fly. And it works very well unless you're doing a screen capture, in which case you crash everything and X restarts. Um, so, you know, good to know if you're doing screen capture. Uh, this works extremely well. I, I find sometimes uh, that working, I work in both ISWM and Fluxbox. And for whatever reason, I, sometimes I find Fluxbox is what I want. Sometimes ISWM is what I want. If you're like me and that's your you know you like working in more than one environment maybe you just want to change your pace no need to log back out and log back in you click on other desktops here and you pick one and it goes to town including these min options which launch with minimal resource usage so good for you guys out there with machines that are ex aging uh, in the extreme one other item and again it's hard to show you on here when you install an app in Synaptic or that get the applications menu will now update automatically no more needing to click the update menu now why is update menu there dolphin if you're saying that well update menus there because if you install a package from outside like D pack using D package or maybe even G Debbie I don't I'm not quite sure on that one um, at the command line, for instance, uh, you, those will not still update the menu. But the lion share of you, your app getting, you are using Synaptic. Those applications are going to the applications menu is going to update automatically. All right, that's it for what's new in Annex 15. Watch out for future videos. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.